Welcome to the second video in the Freshwater Resources and Water Pollution series. Today we're going to focus on water pollution. Learning targets for this video broadly to apply the components of sustainable thinking to the analysis of water pollution, to assess the roles of individuals in creating a sustainable society, to analyze the sources of water pollution in urban areas and agriculture, to identify problems with groundwater contamination, to explain the step-by-step -step process of water treatment, and to evaluate the effectiveness of water quality policies. We'll start out with an overview of the different types of water pollution. So in this slide, you can see four types of water pollution, starting with sewage. Sewage threatens public health and can cause high biochemical oxygen demand in waters. It often emanates from human wastes, soaps, and detergents. Disease-causing agents can cause the spread of infectious diseases through contamination of water supplies with bacteria, viruses, and other similar organisms. Sediment pollution reduces light penetration, limits photosynthesis, and damages freshwater ecosystems. It's caused by erosion of soils, particularly in agricultural lands, that then make their way through runoff into the water systems. Inorganic plant and algal nutrients. These stimulate excess plants and algae, which disrupt again the ecosystems of waterways. They're caused by human and animal wastes and significantly by fertilizer runoff from agricultural properties. Additionally, we have organic compounds which contaminate groundwater and surface water and these threaten the quality of the drinking water supplies. These often emanate from agricultural runoff, industrial wastes, wastes or landfills. Inorganic chemicals can also result from industrial processes, urban runoff, storm sewers, and also from coal burning. And these contaminate groundwater and again, threaten the quality of drinking water supplies. Radioactive substances have contaminated groundwater emanating from nuclear power plants, nuclear weapons industry facilities, and also from medical and scientific research facilities. And finally, thermal pollution, which emanates from industrial runoff. And thermal pollution can deplete uh, water of oxygen, which also harms freshwater ecosystems. As we've seen, water pollutants come from both natural and human activities, and they are in two different varieties. First, point source pollution. This is pollution that enters waterways from a specific identifiable location. So it could be a pipe, a sewer, or possibly a leaky underground storage tank. Non-point source pollution is often the result of rainfall, which collects pollution over a watershed and channels it into a waterway or into the groundwater system. Specific sources of water pollution that are problematic include agriculture. Agriculture is the leading source of surface water pollution in the United States, and it's responsible for about 72% of river water pollution. Here's where it comes from. Fertilizer runoff causes water enrichment Animal wastes and plant residues produce high biological oxygen demands. Chemical pesticides leach into the soil and then make their way into the waterways through runoff. Soil erosion causes sediment pollution in waterways. And the USDA has developed guidelines that livestock farmers are to follow to prevent manure from polluting. Urban runoff is where pollutants are carried from storm drains on streets into our waterways. And the largest pollutants in urban runoff are typically organic wastes. Additionally, fertilizers cause algal growth and these deplete oxygen levels in waterways. There are many sources of pollutants in an urban environment. You can see many of them here on this slide. I encourage you to pause it and take a look. Did you know that half of the United States population obtains its drinking water from groundwater sources? In these groundwater sources, water quality is a concern. Seepage into groundwater from a variety of sources contaminates groundwater. And there are significant concerns over the fact that hydraulic fracturing may also raise water quality problems. The cleanup of contaminated groundwater is considerably more difficult than cleanup of surface waters. The diagram here shows many sources of contamination of groundwater. I encourage you to pause the slide and take a look at them. 
We'll talk about improving water quality and treatment of sewage in two different slides. This first slide looks at water quality for drinking water. So water is stored in a reservoir or it is pumped from a groundwater aquifer and it's treated before it's used so that it's safe to drink. Turbid water is treated with chemical coagulants that clump and settle out the particles. Secondly, that water is filtered through sand to remove any suspended materials or microorganisms. And finally, the water is disinfected. In most places, this is through the addition of chlorine, ozone, or ultraviolet light to kill any remaining disease-causing organisms. The final step is disinfection. That's typically through the addition of chlorine. And that is done to kill any remaining disease-causing organisms. While chlorine is effective, we need to keep it at a minimum to avoid potential health effects. Many municipalities are adopting UV disinfection to kill microorganisms that are not eliminated by chlorine. In terms of treating the water after it's been used, we'll talk about primary and secondary treatment. So primary treatment includes mechanical processes such as screening and gravitational setting to remove any suspended or floating particles. This produces primary sludge. Secondary treatment includes biological treatment of the wastewater to decompose the suspended organic material, which reduces the water's biological oxygen demand and produces a secondary sludge. Now we'll talk about two policies that impact water pollution. In 1974, the Safe Drinking Water Act was passed. It establishes uniform federal standards for drinking water it guarantees safe drinking water. The Environmental Protection Agency determines the maximum contaminant levels, and in 1996, there was an amendment that required municipalities to inform the public of contaminants that were present in their drinking water and in what amounts. In 1977, the Clean Water Act was passed. The Clean Water Act specifies that the qualities of rivers, lakes, aquifers, estuaries, and coastal waters should be safe for fishing and for swimming. It eliminates discharge of pollutants in U.S. waterways, and the Environmental Protection Agency is required to monitor national emissions limitations. So you're asking yourself, how can I help? Well, there are several ways you can help with water pollution. You can help in your bathroom by not throwing away medicines down the toilet, but by disposing of them properly, you can help in the kitchen. Use the smallest amounts possible of those cleaners that you're using and dispose of foods in a safe way. In the driveway, never pour that old motor oil or antifreeze down the storm drain. Take them to a recycling center. Clean up any spilled gasoline, antifreeze, brake fluids, any of those things, and dispose of the rags in a safe way. And in the lawn and garden. Be sure to dispose of pet wastes properly. Don't use the recommended amounts of fertilizer. Cut back a little bit. Make sure that your gutters and your downspouts drain into an area where the grass or the surface will absorb the water instead of allowing it to run off. Let's look at the learning targets. Apply the components of sustainable thinking to the analysis of water pollution. Assess the role of individuals in creating a sustainable society. Analyze the sources of water pollution in urban areas and agriculture. Identify problems with groundwater contamination. Explain the step-by-step -step process of water treatment and sewage treatment. And evaluate the effectiveness of water quality policies. Go ahead and take your mastery quiz, and I'll see you in class.